Hello everyone. So today we're going to look at the TXB 7M uh, drum kit kit from uh, JTS. So this is a package um, of microphones to mic up a drum kit. Um, and although you typically might not be recording an entire drum kit within your um, studio or home studio, um, this is actually a cool way to jump start your um, mic closet. Um, you don't have to use these microphones just for drums. So let's have a look at what's inside. Okay, so here we go. So inside we get a um, bunch of uh, microphone clips which are to go on to the um, the uh, surrounds of the drum, um, they clip onto the drum itself and then the microphone goes in there and therefore you um, don't really need microphone stands. Should work with pretty much all drum kits, um, some drum kits don't have enough of a lip um, around the drum to for them to connect onto, um, but yeah, in those instances I guess you'd just have to use a um, mic stand. So what you get in the pack is you get one, two, three, four, five dynamic microphones. Um, and you get two condenser microphones. So these two um, TX9 uh, pencil condensers are perfect for overheads of your drums, but they're also really good for recording a lot of other, other instruments in your studio. Um, you could use them to record um, piano, um, acoustic guitar, um, that sort of thing. You could even use them for vocals. Um, there's many, many uses um, that these are good for. Um, the difference between the condenser microphone and the dynamic microphone is that um, condensers actually are better for picking up transients, so hits, like big, like the big snaps, um, or cracks of a drum kit, or the attack of um, even vocals or other things. And that's the reason why um, dynamic microphones are typically quite popular for vocals, particularly in live performances where it's harder to control the sudden attacks or explosives. Um, these uh, dull down the attack of instruments or what, it's, what they're recording. Um, so if you're wanting a more realistic sound, then your condenser microphones are always to go. Um, if you're wanting a more controlled sound just off the bat, then the dynamics are really good as well. Uh, so are really good for that. Um, so you get a bunch of snare and tom um, dynamic microphones. Um, ironically though, one of the most famous snare microphones in the world, um, the SM7, uh, oh, sorry, SM57 um, from Shaw, is also one of the most famous guitar amp microphones in the world. So they are perfect for both. So this can be perfect for rec recording your um, guitar amp, it can also be perfectly fine for recording an acoustic guitar um, and vocals. Um, people like uh, uh, Anthony from Red Hot Chili Peppers and things like that, they use um, a snare microphone or guitar amp microphone for vocals. Um, so yeah, it, it's there's no reason to not use them for uh, vocals and other things. This one here, the TX2, is a uh, microphone that's uh, you know, tailored for kick drums, but they're also perfect for recording bass. So if you're wanting to record a bass amp or a um, upright acoustic bass, um, this microphone will give you some really good results for that too. So basically, again, it's a it's a way to kickstart your uh, microphone closet with a bunch of options. If you're recording um, or wanting to do a more live recording, um, and even if you're not recording a drum kit. You can use um, a combination of all these microphones to record um, a couple of vocals and um, a couple of different instruments um, at the same time. So I'm going to set this up, set these microphones up one at a time on a bunch of different instruments, um, just so you can hear them, um, see what they sound like in their raw state. This is the TX6. Uh, dynamic microphone from JTS and is intended for snare and toms. It also can be used for many other instruments around your home studio um, as you'll hear soon. Here you're going to hear the polar pattern as represented by the shaker.
Okay, so as you could hear, good rejection at the back. Um, makes it really good for drums and a project studio because it's gonna not it's not gonna pick up much of the room um, or say a snare sorry a symbol behind the snare that sort of thing so yeah i think it seems like a good option for a tight space <laughs> You may prefer to use a pop filter when recording in a studio and this is what it sounds like with a pop filter and without the pop filter. Okay, so this is the TX2 dynamic microphone from JTS. This is intended as a kick drum microphone. It can also be used for other instru instruments like say a bass guitar um, and an acoustic upright bass, that sort of thing. Now I'm going to demonstrate the polar pattern using the shaker. So as you can hear, it's got very good rejection um, around the sides and back. So yeah, so it's going to be very good for um, isolating or getting an isolated sound from the kick drum, from the bass guitar amp, um, or from a bass instrument, um, which is directly in front front of it. Um, and it's not going to pick up yeah much of that nastiness around it. Um, so yeah, again, very good option for using in a, a project studio or even live on st stage and that sort of thing. If you are going to use this microphone for vocals, you may use a pop filter. Um, and this is what it sounds like with the pop filter in front of it. And this is what it sounds like without the pop filter in front of it. So this is the TX9 condenser microphone from JTS. Um, this is a overhead microphone. It can be used for more than just overheads for a drum. Um, it can be used for vocals and many other instruments as you will see here. Um, so again, it's a condenser microphone, so it's going to pick up um, a much more detailed sound than a dynamic mic microphone. And it's also going to pick up the attack of um, instruments with a lot of attack, like um, drums or strummed guitar, things like that. And overall, being a condensed microphone, it has a nice natural sound. Now to demonstrate the polar pattern of this microphone, I'll use the shaker and you'll hear where it cuts out or drops in volume. So there you go. Good rejection at the back, um, but it picks up a lot of round, so it's going to pick up a nice natural room sound, which can be good or can be bad for a um, home studio, depending on how the room sounds for your recordings. It's going to be um, pretty good for a acoustic guitar or piano and that sort of thing, seeing as those instruments um, give out a, a nice broad sound. Um, and yet it might not be so perfect for a guitar amp or that sort of thing. But we will see in a second. Pop filters are really good for um, speaking on a microphone. And this is what that one sounds like there. Mm -hmm. 